is there a way for someone to actually read those texts, repudi repudiate much of it, and yet still call themselves Muslim in the same way that I call myself a Jewish atheist, right? So I am Jewish because uh, Judaism in incorporates many, many facets, a shared history, shared genes, uh, shared, uh, you know, uh, uh, ethnicity, uh, but I don't necessarily believe in the religious narrative. So I can call myself a non-believer, but who yet belongs to a very distinct group of people. So could something similar happen with Muslims if they awaken to some of the contents or that's that's the challenge it's almost impossible to do so well I, I mean I'm I'm of the opinion like even though you're you're you know sitting in front of me uh, saying you're a Jewish atheist I don't I don't know to the extent that that's something that most people will be able to accept right um, and for most people an identity means something like something more especially with something like Islam where they say it's literally the perfect text you know, and there's not really, it's not as, I guess, there's not a history of a certain ethnicity or whatever, or certain people being associated with a religion. It's a it's considered a universal religion, and it crosses all these cultures, crosses all these boundaries. Um, I just don't think that that's uh, the best way to go about it. I actually think we need to move straight to atheism. Um, wow. I, mean, I, know that, I, know that that's, I know that that's intense. I know that that's intense, but I think that I actually think that's easier. I think it's easier to do for, for most Muslims to just give up the identity altogether. Um, and then that, I may be wrong when I, when I say that, that, but I think that that's totally possible. And um, I think to some extent, there are many countries or many cultures that have been sort of taken over by Islam and their own cultural histories have been erased, right? And South Asia is a great example of right. this because you can compare India and Pakistan side by side. Right. And you can see that they, you know, they, same they're, people, different religions. They're the same people. Yeah. They're the same people, different religion, and they, they had the same culture. They shared the same values. And how much that has changed, right? right? And how much uh, you can see just religion's effect on that very clearly. And I think that's a very unfortunate thing. So I talk to people who are Pakistanis, and I say, you know, look at the, the beauty of, of, this, of, of the culture that has been erased and the harms which would have gone away over time but never did because they were also reinforced to some extent by religion. Right. Um, you know, the music, the dancing, the, the clothes, I mean, it all became a little bit more Islamic and, and everything changed. And I want people to feel sorrowful that that happened. Right. You know, that, that, that those histories are being erased. I want people to feel that way. And I think maybe come back to that identity and maybe that'll, that, that's a step forward in a way that, that maybe a Muslim atheist identity isn't. So that's, that's my opinion right. now. I mean, it may change in the future, but that's how I'm feeling Currently. So I mean, how, how has your approach resonated with the people with whom you interact? I mean, I'm not, I'm not asking you to give me sort of a success rate, but uh, what's the general feel? I mean, what's, what are some of the successes? What are some of the obstacles and so on? Well, I don't, I mean, I don't go out trying to convert people out right. of religion. You know, that's not, I, I don't, I practice what I practice and I believe what I believe and I'm very outspoken about it. And I think that that in itself changes minds and sometimes people think that that's a form of proselytization if you're if you're just vocal about right. your disbelief at all right so if people say something I'll say something right. um, and in my I, I can't tell you about you know broader overall friends because now nowadays I, I spend all, most of my time with with atheists um, but my family it took a long time uh, and different people different things work for different people so you know my my father who is now an atheist um, after, yeah, after yeah yeah it's, it's wonderful um, now that he's an atheist it took I mean it took a, almost a decade to make that happen but it, it, for him it was you know sort of a philosophical thing you know and of morality and then we came then specifically to the religion because a lot of people get really offended if you start immediately talking about the harms of Islam in particular, because they feel singled out. So you know, for for those who for for those who feel sort of besieged, I'll start with a general critique of Islam or, or of religion. Excuse me, of a general critique of religion, and you know, let's apply this to everything. You know, right. and and sometimes that works, and I think that that's what worked. I mean, that that's what worked with my some of my family members. So um, and we and sort of have we have a screening process. Uh, we don't just let anyone in that, right. that wants to be in. We, we speak to the people ahead of time. Um, we do it the best we can. I mean, there's no way to ensure 
um, safety, but we can try. Right. And we do. Uh, and we develop, we have these protocols that we develop and we, and we try and enforce them the best we can. Um, and that, even that scares some people off because um, we, we want you to divulge some personal information about yourself to us um, so that we can understand if you are, you know, really like, and what are your motives for joining something like this. And some people aren't even comfortable doing that because they're so afraid. Right. Now, are you um, usually afraid uh, for sort of the most basal, you know, survival reasons I'm going to be killed as an apostate or are they predominantly afraid to be ostracized from their community, uh, their families, and so on. And of course, both can hold true, but what's, what's your general feeling? How, how imminent is each danger in their minds? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it, depends, it depends on the person. Sorry about the vague answer, but I think it, it, it depends on the person. Um, there are quite a few, unfortunately, who are afraid. Physically, um, of, they're like, going to be of, harmed. Of, of physical danger. Wow. Um, I wouldn't say that's a majority, but... It's it's sizable minority, and that's um, and, and those people tend to sort of run away quicker, right. in the sense that we will tell them, you know, we require that you do X Y Z before um, you can join our organization. Sometimes they get afraid for that because they they say, I don't even want that much revealed. Um, but and these are for, people who are living in North America, right? They're not contacting right. you from Pakistan, right? And they tend to be they tend to be you know people from more extremist ethnic groups, I guess. The Somali community, for example, yes. is one that, it, that tends to be a lot more extreme uh, to, to apostates and to people who sort of deviate. It's not so bad with Pakistanis, um, not so bad with Indians, not so bad with Bangladeshis, as it is with, with Somalis, I've found. Um, so there is variation in terms of uh, where maybe you're from. And any what, insight as how to that why that would be? Why, why would that be? Do you have any any sense? Is it is it how uh, close you are, sort of, to the Arabic roots? I mean, literally, geographically, if not ideologically, or what what can explain this phenomenon? If if you know, I mean, uh, I can only guess. Right. And definitely, something that I've noticed is that there's a romanticization of you know Arab culture right. and 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 the religion uh, in the communities that that tend to be the most extreme right. and. With with Pakistanis, I mean, the the religion is a big part of it, but there is there is an independent culture that existed before the religion came in, um, that exists now, and so you can sort of uh, relate to both, and you can sort of hold those both identities a little bit easier than with some some other countries. Right, I think. But, you know, right. in Lebanon, uh, at the time that I was growing up there in the seventies uh, and you know sixties, uh, you almost never saw any woman wearing any Islamic garb. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, it was very, very badly seen by everybody, Muslims, non-Muslims uh, alike, uh, to actually uh, dress in this manner. And then, of course, as you know, if you look at photos from Afghanistan in two different time periods, right. or in Iran, and Pakistan's I'm, the same. Pakistan is the right. same. And so... Uh, you know, there's, there, I mean, it's it's quite hypocritical to sort of argue that there, there is no way to be uh, to maintain your Muslim identity without, uh, you know, adorn, adorn, uh, donning these uh, attires because we've got all sorts of historical contexts where women weren't wearing it. Even in the context of Montreal, I mean, the now of course this is mainly due to immigration, uh, but if you compare the number of women who today walk around Montreal streets wearing all sorts of various Islamic garbs to 10 or 12 years ago. I mean, you absolutely never saw it then. And I would probably venture something like one out of every 10 women that you see on the streets today is wearing an Islamic garb. And so I wonder if there is a way to go back to uh, the more secular, modern style. Of, I mean, what, what do you think would have to happen? Is it that you have to convince these women that they can be, they can still maintain their identities without having to consistently uh, create this wall of separation with the other? What, what's the solution to this? Uh, I mean, it, I think that's involved, tied in with the, you know, the rise of, of more fundamentalist, literalist, right. literalist Islam overall. And I, I wonder what that has to do with, you know, people actually reading it. Right. You know, the rise of literacy of, of the average population in these countries who are reading it and who can see for themselves that the most extremist people are more on the ball right. than maybe the, the more liberal ones. And also, in, on that same vein, there are people who are shedding their cultural backgrounds in favor, for, in favor of a more Islamic, 
you know, identity. Right. And you see that a lot in the West, which scares me. Right. Um, you, you see that a lot where there's a concentrated effort to, to, to find out what was cultural, like say for in the Pakistani communities there may be in, in the mosques, there's an effort to look at what is uh, an Islamic tradition or what's a Pakistani tradition and right. if it's a Pakistani tradition let's toss it and let's embrace whatever is the Islamic tradition I mean unless they don't contradict each other at all and they right. don't affect each other at, at all right. in any way um, so there is this growth of like a universal global Muslim identity that I think is tied into this this women wearing hijab all the time because I mean the way that they defined uh, what being Muslim was had a lot to do with their local customs. Right. So, you know, the way women in Pakistan uh, defined it, I mean, then there was the, the growth of the, there was a lot of Sufis in India and in Pakistan for, at a time, and that was, um, but now you can see that that's not, you can read the Quran for yourself, and you can see that that's not the truth. Um, so I think things are changing, and that's right. that's very unfortunate. I don't know if there's there's a way to go back because, now, because because we do have something that we're we're starting with. We do have this this text, and unless you can say this text is not the complete truth or it's not a literal truth, you can't go anywhere. 